would welcome the opportunity to see it. Thanks, Green. John, you guys are issuing this warning to Iran two days after renewing a waiver that unlocked $10 billion in frozen funds. Do, don't you think Iran is paying more attention to the actions of this administration than the words? Can't speak for the Mullahs or what they're paying attention to or not. Jackie, I would remind that this sanctions waiver is renewed or up for renewal every three months. It's a quarterly thing. Um, it's a sanctions package that was actually put in place by the previous administration, by President Trump and his team, that allows for Iraq to be able to work its way off of Iranian energy uh, so that they can keep the lights on. And we're continuing to work with our Iraqi partners about how to do that. But right now, they still are dependent uh, for a lot uh, of energy from coming from Iran. And so we don't want to penalize the Iraqi people for efforts that they're still trying to get to, to wean off of that. And I would remind you, uh, everybody, and we've talked about this before, I think three months ago we probably talked about this before, none of this money goes to the mullahs, none of this money goes into Tehran. The sanctions relief that is provided actually is go goes to vendors that provide humanitarian assistance to the Iranian people. So not only do the Iraqi people not suffer because of this, the Iranian people aren't going to suffer because of this. Wouldn't it be, though, the Iranian people who would suffer as a result of the teeth and the warning? I mean, you say, you're saying you would suspend flights on Iran air to Europe if Iran supplies ballistic missiles to Russia. I didn't say that. Press report said that. It's not, but it's not like, you know, the Ayatollah flies commercial. I mean, that's the Iranian people would be the ones who'd be harmed by that if that comes to pass. It's also not like the, the regime and the IRGC are, sit, are, are thinking this is some sort of windfall, like they're gonna, like this is somehow gonna make a big difference in their support for terrorist networks in the region. I mean, they continue to support Hezbollah, ha Hamas, the Houthis. I could go on and on. Um, that hasn't changed since 2018 when these waivers have been have been passed by this administration and the previous one. Wait now, hold on a second. So we, this is you're talking about one of the most heavily sanctioned countries on the planet, and we're still gonna look at additional options if we need to. We've been nothing but clear and direct, and quite frankly forceful in pushing back on Iran's activities in the region. In the last three months alone, since the last renewal, you had an Iran-backed proxy kill three American soldiers in a drone attack in Jordan, the Houthis in, in the Red Sea firing anti-ship and ballistic missiles, suicide drones, uh, commercial vessels and Navy ships. You had, you know, three atomic bombs uh, apparently could be built in Iran with uh, Ura uranium's been enriched to that extent. Lincoln today addressing that very issue in Vienna, saying there's still an issue of the IAEA inspectors. I mean, what have they done in the last three months to justify another renewal of this waiver? It's a renewal that we go through every quarter. Uh, we, and it's, it's really about not penalizing the Iraqi people and the fact that they're still heavily dependent on Iranian, Iranian energy. But in the last three months, look what else we've done. We've gone after Houthi capabilities ashore. We've got a coalition of ships in the Red Sea protecting against uh, Houthi attacks on shipping there. We have struck back and forcefully against some of these militia groups in, in Iraq and Syria. We continue to have sanctions in place. Uh, uh, significant sanctions on the Iranian regime for multiple reasons. They're, they're protesters, they're you know, going after protesters, the support for terrorist networks, the, their nuclear program. I mean, there's a lot of sanctions in place. And oh, by the way, we're still conducting interdiction operations at sea to try to prevent their shipment of, of material and arms to some of these groups. So the idea that we're just laying back and not doing anything on Iran just doesn't, doesn't, just flies in the face of the, of the facts. Thank you, Admiral. So you said the U.S. has not seen a plan to protect civilians in Rafah, yet Netanyahu has already authorized an invasion.